Hey, what's up guys, it's Seth from Workbench, and this week we're gonna fill objects with smoke. This week we're gonna start out by filling some simple objects with smoke, and then ultimately we're gonna take what we learned there and apply it to filling the inside of our logo. And then we're gonna finish it off by rendering it in Redshift. This should be a quick one, but we got a lot to do, so let's get started. So to start off with, I'm gonna create a platonic, and I'm gonna add two things to it. I'm gonna add a display tag, and I'm gonna turn on the first one here, and I'm gonna set it to lines. Then I'm gonna right click on it and go to X particles tags, and then I'm gonna do an X particles collider tag. Those are those two right there. And I have this set to pressure two, but this is not important right now. What's important though, is that this be checked off because if you have it set to solid, what will happen is it will not fill the volume. It actually won't do anything at all because it thinks it's a solid object. Then I'm gonna create a plane and I'm going to right click on that plane, go down to X particles tags, and I'm gonna give it X particles exposure source. That's this one here. And again, the same thing for this. If this is set to solid, it will not emit at all. So make sure to, if you're using a plane, set that to turned off. And then I went into X particles, dynamic objects, and I grabbed an explosion effects, and that'll give you this box here. And I scaled mine way down. In general, when you're using explosion effects, essentially you wanna keep it as small as you can because the calculations happen out here as well. So the smaller it is, the faster your calculations are gonna be. And frankly, since I'm just Filling this shape with this smoke, then I don't need to have calculations out here. So I made it as tight as I could. Um, in Explosia, I did make a couple changes. I made these voxels smaller. And when I go ahead to do my final cache of this setup, I'm gonna make the voxels even smaller so that I get a nice clean edge. So for now, let's take a look at what we got. It's already looking pretty cool. There's definitely a couple things that we can add to it to make it a little more interesting, but that's pretty cool for right now. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go in here, I'm gonna crank up the sim speed, but I'm gonna leave the sim scale alone. I'm gonna give myself some like nice big mushrooms here. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna knock down the gravity a bit. And if you ever need to see what kind of a shape you're kind of getting, well, you can adjust your display here to have more slices. Uh, let's say 128 um, resolution. Let's go 128. So that gives you a pretty good idea of what your render is going to look like. So this is definitely the look we're after. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to do a quick cache and I'll be right back. So that caching took about mm, five, 10 minutes, maybe. So I'm going to play it back here. And kind of see what we did. Yep, that's exactly what I wanted. So I did change a couple of the settings in here. Um, I brought the sim speed up to 500. I kept the voxel size about 1.8. And I also changed the gravity to zero um, and left the buoyancy and everything else about the same. But that's the basic gist of setting this up. So now let's go take a look at uh, the cooler version. So just like the other one, I went in here and I created my W for my boundary that has the exposure tag, collider tag on it. And that again is not set to solid. I have the pressure cranked up to 35. And then of course I took my exposure effects and I made it real small. So that it essentially just encompasses the W here. I'm gonna hide that. And then for my emitter, I took my W and I made it smaller and I cut it down so that I could have an emitter that was the same shape. And then in here, I made sure again to turn off solid because again, if this was solid, it would not emit anything. This is a single sided poly. Of course, the way to get around that would be to do an extrude. I didn't want to do that. I only wanted to emit from the single plane. I changed the pressure setting on this to 500 and then I cached it. So I have the cache in here so I can kind of show you what that looks like. I made some changes inside the exposure effects. I set my voxel size to one. I set in the simulation tab, I set my sim scale to 50 and my sim speed to 50. I set the gravity to zero. I set my smoke buoyancy to zero and I left these all rest of them default. I believe I added a little bit of vorticity radius and a little bit of vorticity. So before I hit cache, I went in here and made sure that my EFX format was set to open VDB. And that's because I'm going to render out in Redshift and I needed a format that Redshift understands. So then I cached it and I got this here. 
and then I open the new scene. So you start off with a redshift volume, and here's where I point it to my cache. Then I go into the animation tab and tell it to detect frames. It's got 90 frames. And then just so that I can see it in the viewport, I have this set to points and I have it set to maximum 57. So here's my, my cached animation. So in order to see this in Redshift, there's a couple things you have to do. Number one, we're gonna have to go in here and create a Redshift volume texture. This is what the Redshift volume texture looks like. And in our case, uh, I'm gonna open up a Redshift render view. So you see what's going on here. So I added some lighting to it. There you go, and there you go. Nothing too crazy. I did make sure that inside the lights, I'm contributing to the volume scale here, and I did that to all of them. And then as far as settings in the shader, I set the scatter channel to density, and I changed the colors up a little bit. I set the scatter coefficient to 6.3, and then under emission, I set that to density as well. And I have that turned way down. I have it set to 0 0.05. Then in the advanced tab, I left it alone. I'm going to show you something a little bit interesting that you can play with inside the advanced tab, but not right this second. So then the other thing I did was I created this glass container, uh, which is essentially just a W. I added a bevel to it so that I had some nice little edges to catch some light. And then I have a cloth surface tag on top of that so that it would give us a little bit of thickness. And that's why it's bending the light so much here. So that's about it. So you can see the setups are really quick and really simple. So let me show you what I was telling you. So just by tweaking some of the settings in here, so you can see I've got a couple different channels here. So if I go into my color settings in my shader here, so in here, if I switch this to let's say fuel, so if you click over here and go to fuel, you're gonna get a completely different look. Check that looks pretty cool. But if you go into here and you start tweaking with like, give yourself a different minimum, you get this crazy, you can kind of see what a cool looking thing it is. And didn't really have to do anything else. It's just in here already. And the cool thing about it is it's animated. And again, the only thing I did was set my scatter channel to fuel and I cranked up my new minimum. And that's what you get. I will say the only thing that kind of I don't love about doing that is that you don't get your volume completely full but it's a different look and it's really cool and you can check out this here's the render that I did it obviously turned on the smoke and left the glass on so you know, it looks pretty neat though all right well I told you this would be a quick one so that's all I got for you definitely play around and experiment with this stuff me experimenting is how I ended up with this if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. Hey, and if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench. And definitely check out the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we will catch you next week.